Okay, we've talked a lot about preventing fires and what to do in case of a fire. Now we're gonna talk about another type of danger. We're gonna talk about severe weather. And before I get started, I want you to stop and think for a few minutes about what kinds of severe weather we could have in, in Illinois. And I want you to consider the whole year, okay? But let's see what severe weather you came up with. Give yourself a thumbs up if you came up with thunderstorms and lightning or flooding or hailstorms. Okay, those are all things that we can face here in the Midwest. How about um, a heat wave or drought when it's really dry or in the winter, blizzards? Okay, maybe you came up with those ideas. Maybe you also thought of um, tornadoes or earthquakes which are less, less common, but are certainly possible where we live as well. Now, if you considered hurricanes as a choice, um, no, we're luckily we're not susceptible to hurricanes here in the Midwest because we live pretty far from the ocean. But as you can see, we have a lot of different kinds of weather here and some of it can be severe. So let's take a closer look. All right, let's get started by talking about a type of weather that we're guaranteed to have every year, right? Thunderstorms. And when you think of thunderstorms, do you know which comes first, um, thunder or lightning? Okay, thunderstorms always have both thunder and lightning. So let's watch a short video to see if you can answer that question. Pay attention and find the answer in the video. Most of the lightning takes place within the cloud, but some strikes the earth in bold flashes. In these cases, the charge escapes the cloud, making a branching path that reaches for the ground. The energy of the lightning strike contains hundreds of millions of volts and lasts only a fraction of a second. What seems to be a single flash is actually a series of return strokes of electrical energy reaching back up into the clouds. The path reaches temperatures of around 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This extreme heat creates the blue thundercloud as excessive pressure within the lightning path expands at supersonic rates on return strokes. Okay, so did you hear the answer? Okay, if you were listening closely, you know that lightning comes first and the heat and the electricity from the lightning heat that can get up to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit um, causes that air around it to, to contract and to, um, or to expand and create that boom of thunder. Okay, so let's learn more about thunderstorms. We don't want to get struck with all the electrical charge, right? Unfortunately, people get injured or killed by lightning every year. To stay safe, we have to go indoors at the first sound of thunder. Because whenever you hear thunder, you are at risk of being struck by lightning. So get indoors. We definitely don't want to be around water or trees or metal like fences because those things can conduct electricity. And we don't want to be in fields or on hills where we're the tallest object around. That's why in our community, we have many lightning detectors, especially around pools and sports fields to alert us when there is lightning nearby. Then it's everybody out of the pool, off the field and inside to a safe, sturdy building. Okay. Even when we're inside, we want to make sure we keep away from electrical equipment, wiring, and water pipes, because those are things that can conduct electricity even inside. So remember this catchy phrase, when thunder roars, go indoors. Okay, that tells us to go inside a safe, sturdy shelter when we hear the thunder and stay inside until that storm has passed. All right, but... Uh, lightning's not the only danger that's associated with thunderstorms. Winds can be very dangerous, too. Winds can be stronger than some of tornadoes, up to 125 miles per hour. And strong winds can knock down trees and cause things to fly through the air. We definitely don't want to be outside for that. Thunderstorms can sometimes bring lots of rain in a short amount of time, causing flooding. A lot of people don't realize that flooding is the number one cause of deaths related to thunderstorms. 
So let's be sure to stay away from floodwaters. It doesn't take much to sweep a person away or a car. So we use the phrase, turn around, don't drown, when we want to remind people to stay away from floodwaters. Don't try to drive through. You can't tell how deep the water is. Find another way to go. And don't walk around the floodwaters either where you could be swept away. We can also have hail with thunderstorms. And sometimes those ice cubes are larger than a softball. We definitely don't want to be outside for that either. All right, let's look at another example of severe weather, tornadoes. And let's examine how the National Weather Service gives it, lets us know when we're at risk. If the National Weather Service issues a watch, that means that weather conditions are such that a tornado could develop, but it's not guaranteed. A watch tells us that we should be alert and pay attention to the weather on a cell phone or radio or on TV. All right. Now, a tornado warning is much more serious. It means that a tornado has been spotted by a person or on radar. A tornado warning means that we need to take shelter immediately. If you're at school, we're going to follow our school's plan and get to our assigned place and get into position like we've practiced. Okay, if we're at home, we need to go to the lowest level of the home to an interior room without windows and get into position like just like you practice at school in, in this picture. Now would be the best time to talk to your families about where you would go in case of um, a tornado. Where would be the safe place in your home? Everybody's may be different, okay? But you want, you want it to be on the lower level and away from windows. That's best to prepare now so you'll know what to do ahead of time and know straight where to go in case a tornado warning comes up. <laughs> 